how old are you at the time that you become president? Um, I probably became president of the Detroit office around 30. Um, and then by the time I leave in 2014, I'm overseeing what's left of the New York office and Detroit. So both of the offices that we have. Um, and at that point in time, when I left, let's see, I'm 33. So probably between 30 to 33 is when I was president there. So this is why I started this conversation off by calling you one of the youngest and brightest in corporate America. Mm -hmm. You like that, that is a rock star move. Like you are at that point so young and you're mm -hmm. over millions and millions and millions of dollars in business. Absolutely. What, what is the sense of pressure like at that point for you? Because most people, 29, 30 years yeah. old, they're kind of just getting their footing in at a company. They've probably been yeah. there for a few years. Maybe they have gotten one promotion. But you're yeah. running not just the Detroit office, but what's left of the New York office. How do you handle that pressure? Yeah, I will definitely say it was a lot of pressure um, for a lot of reasons. One, um, pressure for the, the, the families in the room, right? So I'm very aware that the work that I do and the strategy that I drive and the direction that I, it, it's responsible for feeding families, right? And at Global Few, you know, at that time, we're hundreds of people, right? So hundreds of families on the line, and that's always a ton of pressure. Um, being young also is difficult, so I never forget walking in to meet the global CEO of Jeep for the first time for him to learn that I'm running his business in the U.S., not just black people, but black, white, brown, right, total market. And he looks across the table like, can you even drive a Jeep, right? <laughs> Looking at my baby face, my man's like, are you even 16 years old? And so then you feel the pressure to perform, right? Because people are going to look at you like, this kid may not be able to get the job done. Um, and then, of course, you have all the people, the mentors, the coaches, the Dons, the Allens who believed in me and enough to set me in that role. And so you just don't want to fail any of them. So for sure, the pressure is heavy. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I believe that they, um, emotions are, are, are directions, are, sorry, emotions are data, not direction, right? So you may feel the stress and you may feel the pressure, but that doesn't mean that, that's, that that stops you or that you allow that to, to hold you back. It just means you take the data, you feel it, and then you just got to go figure out how to deliver and win. Dope. <laughs> like, let's stay there for a second. I want to zone in on that. Yeah. Emotions are data, not direction. That's exactly right. Too often people use the data, the emotions to guide their, their behaviors and their actions, right? For me, it just has to be data that you feel, you compartmentalize, and then you just got to stay focused on the task at hand. I love that. I love that. We're going to highlight that in one of the segments. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I love it. <that. laughs> Talk to me. You're a young president. Like you said, yeah. you walk into a meeting with the CEO of Jeep. Yeah, I have to believe this is a 65, you know, 60 plus white man, at least. Yeah, definitely. High, definitely 50 something white man. Yeah. Global, too. This is the U.S. This is yeah, the global head. Correct. Talk to me about two different things. Number one, you moved up the rank so quickly within your own company. Mm -hmm. You go from peer to now being boss. Mm hmm. How do you handle that? And yeah. also, how do you handle being this young, hotshot executive now dealing with people on global business and they're looking at you like you're just a kid? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so talk about dealing with my peers first and foremost. Um, so definitely that one was interesting. Right. And it's actually something I still don't know that I've ever gotten over, meaning I was able to acquire success at such a young age. Um, I still am like what I would call like a very in the trenches leader. Um, because when I was 30 years old, I wasn't going to leave my friends staying up all night working on projects, right? Just because I was the boss. If they were going to be in the office till two in the morning, I was going to be in the office till two in the morning, right? And so that has become a, a gift and a, and a great piece of my leadership style because I'm accessible, because I've never felt, you know, I think when you, if it takes you 30 years to get here, you feel like there's a space between you and everybody else and you behave a certain way. Right. Because it didn't take me that long to get there, it was like, there is no space. We are all one in the same and I treat everybody 
everybody um, like they're on my same level. And I think, like I said, that's been a gift. I've, I've also had to deal with the curse of that, which is quite often I feel like I don't get the same respect that the 65 year old white man would get, not even from my teams who may love me and appreciate how accessible I am. Um, but because I'm so accessible, I think it gets rid of some of that mystery and then they don't treat me with the same kind of respect um, and honor that I think they would do if, you know, again, I was a 65 year old white person. So that's definitely been a thing kind of keeping up with me my whole career. Um, but then just in terms of how do I get their um, buy-in, um, one, I think is just making sure that they know that they are uh, first and foremost my priority. So I always talk about growing giants, right? It's not about me, it's about the people um, who I get to work with and how do I grow them into the giants that they wanna be. So proving that I'm not focused on just my career and focused on shooting up to the top, but I'm focused on the people and the task at hand. And then at the end of the day, I just think it's, it's about delivering the work and God, we trust everybody else bring your data. Either you can do the job or you can't do the job. And I think my ability to demonstrate that I could build the strategies that could sell them that I could sell the creative and that, you know, our creators have come up with my continuous ability to deliver results for the group, I think earned me the, res the, you know, the respect and love to help me do the job that I needed to do. You know, you have an interesting uh, management style because I remember when I was coming up, I was a young intern and I won't say the name, um, many people know this woman, but okay. she told the boss that I was working for at the time I was interning for, she, I, I remember sitting in on a meeting and she 